So Sami Zayn won the gauntlet match and he's going to WrestleMania to face Gunta for the Intercontinental Championship. The issue is, seems like a big portion of the fans want to see Gunter versus Chad Gable instead. And here's the deal, people. I talked about this before, I, I said that Chad Gable's moment has passed. The matches were great, the story was awesome, but it's time for someone else. But you know what, people? This was kind of an eye-opener. This shit was a wake-up call, man. I loved seeing Chad Gable in that match, and I was kinda rooting for him in a way. And look, I know we're doing this way too much. We don't get what we want, and all of a sudden we're booking triple threat matches. But I mean, would we complain about that? Not sure about the story, but one thing's for sure. The match would be absolutely mind-blowing. And don't get me wrong, I wanna see Sami Zayn versus Gunter too. I'm not even sure how to feel about this whole situation. Like I've said, it seems like even the majority of the fans don't really know how to feel about that because everybody loves the underdog story. Chad Gable right now is the ultimate underdog. This is some David vs. Goliath shit right here. And Sami Zayn is no longer the underdog. At this point, Sami Zayn is a veteran who achieved a lot in the WWE. I mean, he literally main evented WrestleMania. Chad Gable also said he's not going to request a rematch after losing to Sami Zayn, and this was in a way kind of heartbreaking. My biggest issue is that there's probably no plans for Chad Gable at WrestleMania unless he makes it to the six-pack uh, WWE Tag Team Championship ladder match, and that is the best case scenario in my opinion. Man, I really like Sami, I'm very excited about the match but I get where people are coming from after so many great matches such hard work you just want to see this man you know in a way I'll get his moment but let me know in the comments below how do you feel about this situation would you rather see Sami Zayn versus Gunter or Chad Gable versus Gunter now Raw was actually a really good show and uh you're gonna hear me ranting man so Stick around, I have a lot to say about this show, uh, not necessarily what happened on the show, but about people's response and what really pisses me off in the IWC. I guess I should stop checking Twitter after all, because I, I don't get some people, man. I, I, I just don't get it. I... I I don't get it. So the show kicks off with Drew McIntyre, who's the best part of Mario Nitro every week. And again, I really like this promo. He keeps saying that Seth Rollins should stop focusing on the bloodline. He says Seth Rollins couldn't help himself and had to accept two WrestleMania main events. The bigger picture is The Rock. Wrestling went from carnivals to arenas to stadiums. And the next progression is to work with one of the most powerful people on Earth. He understands Cody's issues with The Rock, but says Rollins thinks Things, everything revolves around him when it doesn't. What was also funny is people started chanting CM Punk and Drew McIntyre started laughing and said, uh, you owe me. I'm keeping you relevant. He says he will be a future champion for fans to invest in and be proud of. We see Seth Rollins and this was a really, really good promo between two men. I liked it when Seth Rollins said, I thought CM Punk was the most hypocritical superstar of all time. Turns out it's you because you've been bitching about the bloodline, but now they're helping you, so I'm not buying this shit that you don't want the bloodline to interfere. Because Drew McIntyre kept talking about how, you know what? I'm not focusing on the bloodline anymore. Of course he's not. They're helping the dude. Rollins says, it seems like you want to align yourself with the bloodline, win the championship, but it won't happen because everybody at the end of WrestleMania will be singing my song. McIntyre says, you can't provoke me. So he was about to leave and Seth Rollins says, the reason why I'm not worried about you, I'm not talking about you, is because I have a lot of things going on. My back issues, all the injuries, The Rock, Roman Reigns, and you're at the bottom of my concern. So Drew McIntyre was big mad. This was good, man. This was really good. And uh, this might be controversial. I kind of liked Seth Rollins as a champion. I'm happy he was a champion. I'm happy he was the first champion. He deserved it. Yet at the same time, I can't wait for Seth Rollins to lose the championship. You know? You know what I mean? You pro some of you probably feel the same way. Like, I, I need that change. We've only seen one world heavyweight champion. I mean, if Drew McIntyre loses it, I think, man, I would probably be as disappointed or shocked 
as seeing uh, Cody losing. I want Drew McIntyre to win that bad. There's a Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan, which was actually a pretty good match. So these been feuding ever since Liv Morgan returned to the WWE. Uh, this was pretty obvious. I mean, Becky Lynch is going to WrestleMania. So yes, Becky Lynch won the match. And the match was actually pretty good. We see Rhea Ripley. And this time around, it was a better promo. My main issue is, it seems like Becky is not as over as WWE are trying to portray her. I don't know what it is man I i'm just not hearing that response is it just me i'm not seeing enough people talking about this but it f I, I just feel like people don't care that much for whatever reason the point of this promo was rhea ripley accusing becky of accepting all of these matches wrestling Liv, wrestling nia Jax, just so she could have an excuse after wrestlemania when she loses against mummy later on the show we also saw mutual respect between Liv morgan and becky lynch and they got attacked by nia Jax. So, you know, I'm still kind of excited about the match. I feel like it's one of the biggest Rhea Ripley matches possible. And I feel like the biggest thing I like about this match is that it's going to be almost like a passing of a torch because Becky Lynch was the face of the women's division for quite a few years now. And I think it's clearly Rhea Ripley now. She's the heel, but people are chanting mommy. They're not chanting the man or Becky or Lynch or whatever she may call herself. Everybody is chanting for Rhea. So I feel like at WrestleMania, she's going to lose and uh, Rhea Ripley is going to be that new face of the women's division if she already isn't and might even turn face. I feel like, man, it's kind of time. I know she's with the Judgment Day, but you, you can't ignore the crowd reaction. Okay, so let's talk about the WWE Tag Team Championship match. Over the next few weeks, we're going to have a lot of qualifiers. We're getting a six-pack ladder match for undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship, which is great. You know, I miss ladder matches at WrestleMania. I think WrestleMania is such a big event. You need to ignore all the gimmick pay-per-views. Anything can happen. Hell in a Cell matches... Even money in the bank, I wouldn't be mad about that. Anything goes. It's WrestleMania. We need more stipulation matches, but maybe that's just my opinion. And of course, the Judgment Day don't really appreciate that. Oh, we need to talk about this, man. So not necessarily about what happened during this match, but... Uh, okay, so you guys know the deal. Uh, Maxine Dupree got booed at the live event after a botch because... I mean, uh, it's one of these cases where, of course, people were being assholes but it's a wrestling show people boo and to be fair sh she is still learning she's not very good at this she's probably going to improve she might end up being one of the best i'm not saying it's impossible i'm just saying that it's it's a weird situation where maybe people were too harsh but I, I mean, you know, you know how it is. It, it's wrestling, man. People booed John Cena. So WWE tried to capitalize on that and created one of the most cringiest moments of all time. Candice LeRae, you know, said, uh, you suck at this, you don't belong. The locker room is talking shit about you. I'm happy your dead brother can't see you because he would be embarrassed. And that's how Maxine lost the match because she was hurt. So I guess these two are heels now. I'm not necessarily talking about the material of the promo. I think that was okay. It seems like they were going somewhere. But man, the delivery. The delivery was so bad. So bad. Like, I was watching this and I'm like, this is bad TV. This is bad TV right here. Man, Michael Cole interviewed Cody Rhodes and I really, really like this promo. For the first time in quite a few weeks, I'm interested in this finish the story stuff. I mean, I always am, but you know, it's kind of repetitive sometimes. I gotta finish the story. We get it, Cody. We're waiting. We're waiting, boy. We're waiting. But this time around, he made it even more personal. I need to finish that story, but I can't give that championship to my father anymore. And he started crying, but he can give it to his mother he can you know show this championship to his uh, uh wife his sister and he started crying and people supported him and that's what pisses me off man you go to x twitter and people are just shitting on cody for crying and it's like 
I like this shit, man. I take that, man. I take Cody Rhodes building a story, showing emotion, making it look real, making me believe over shit that these people most likely prefer, which I can already picture in my head, man. Oh, what a hurricane of the ladder! Story fucking telling people that's what's important in pro wrestling, so it's like... Come on, when, when you're joking about that, I get it, man, I get it, okay, we, we can joke about that all day. But saying shit like, I, I will not be able to take Cody Rhodes as a champion seriously because he cries. Well, Roman cries too, by the way. You get what I mean, it, it, it's, it's so ridiculous. Michael Cole also pointed out how Seth Rollins won against Roman Reigns but never got that rematch, so how could you trust him? And Cody said, people change, you changed, Rollins changed, I've changed, people changed. Yet, uh, Rollins is going to turn his ass on you, man. I'm really interested in how people are going to react. The only reason it may not happen is Saffron's actually wrestling Drew McIntyre at night too, who's a heel, so that wouldn't make as much sense anymore, but we'll see what's gonna happen, man. We saw the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships, this camera angle is new, I kinda like that, and as you guys imagine, the championships got retained. Andrade might become a part of the Judgment Day, but more likely, since he's a babyface, I believe, we might get Andrade vs. Dom at WrestleMania. We saw R-Truth vs. Damien Priest, and man, R-Truth was actually pretty impressive in this one so he's not necessarily someone you could call a jobber in the WWE but you know a comedy character who loses and it doesn't affect him anyway because well he's here to entertain you but I liked what he did in this match it was kind of refreshing and you know we might take him a bit more seriously in that championship match of course he lost I mean he ain't gonna win that even with a John Cena moveset but he lost against Damian Priest with some good offense can't complain. Also, we saw Jey Uso who challenged his brother to a WrestleMania match, which was expected. And again, WrestleMania is looking really, really good. I've mentioned this before, but I've seen an old interview between the two, and they talked about how their absolute dream in the WWE is to wrestle each other at WrestleMania. So it's about to be clinic, man. This match is going to be g -g 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 good. And finally, we got that gauntlet match. Man, this was good. So JD got eliminated by Ricochet. Ricochet got eliminated by Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed got eliminated by Sami Zayn. Then Shinsuke Nakamura, who talks a lot of shit. Well, he lost again. And in the finals, it was Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn, which was pretty long. Very good. Very, very good. Like I've said, I was watching this. I'm like, do I want Sami to win? or Chad Gable doing? Can we get a bullshit finish so we can get both at WrestleMania? This was really, really good, and uh, it's one of these unfortunate situations for the WWE where it just makes a lot more sense for Sami to be in that match, but people are gonna be, you know, divided a little bit. Of course, Sami Zayn wins the match, barely, but we got this mutual respect. It seemed like Chad Gable was about to turn heel, but that's just how mad he was that he couldn't do it. And the show ends with Gunta making his entrance with that drip. Man, Gunter with the suit and the Intercontinental Championship. Just classy, just classy. That is my champion right here. And that was your Monday Night Raw. Thank you for watching this video. And yes, 400,000 subscribers. Uh, I, I'm not good with words when it comes to that, but I just wanna wanna let you guys know that I'm very grateful thankful means the world to me and uh, 500k is the goal not sure how long it will take but with the support you guys are showing i think i think we will be pleasantly surprised i'm just happy that we're moving somewhere because i felt like i was a bit lost on youtube i didn't know what to do but lately i think we're figuring it out i think we are uh, I, one thing that pisses me off is that i really wanted to go all in this month, man, with 2K24, and I feel like I disappointed my audience, I feel like I disappointed myself, definitely, I, well, we'll see, I I'll try to make content that I wanted to make, maybe it's a bit too late, like, I want to play special guest referee for whatever reason, and, uh, We'll see, we'll see, we'll try that, we'll try that, but uh, thank you for watching this video, appreciate that, like, subscribe if you already did, and the great one, peace, love, and hugs, it's been a pleasure.